President Trump, who ventured out of the White House today, taking new action to reduce coronavirus spread from a global hotspot. National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien. We'll be restricting travel from Brazil, not because we don't love the Brazilian people, we don't want to help them, and we're, they're not a close ally, but uh, just to, to protect the American people during this crisis. Brazil's President Bolsonaro. Brazil loves him, and the USA loves him. At Mar-a-Lago in early March, has been vocally dismissive of the virus. Now Brazil is second to the U.S. for total number of cases worldwide. The president already blocked entry for non-U.S. citizens from China, the U.K., Ireland, and much of Europe. This week, he raised concerns about Brazil. I don't want people coming in here and affecting our people. The Prime Minister has publicly backed his most senior and influential adviser, Dominic Cummings, in the face of calls for his sacking after it emerged he'd driven more than 250 miles from his home in London to County Durham when the government had introduced its coronavirus lockdown. It happened during the period Mr Cummings' wife had contracted the virus. Some Conservative backbenchers have accused him of arrogance, while Labour has called for Mr Cummings to resign. However, Boris Johnson says his adviser had acted responsibly, legally and with integrity. Now, it comes as 118 more deaths were announced in the past 24 hours. That's the lowest figure since the lockdown began, though there's usually a lag in recording deaths at the weekend. And that brings the total number of people who've died in the UK to 36,793. Russia has become the world's second most infected country by the virus. However, Vladimir Putin has begun to ease the lockdown measures. The nationwide lockdown that lasted for six weeks ended on the 12th of May. But it did not mean a return to normal life. Putin has put responsibility on the regional authorities to decide how and when the restriction measures can be lifted. There are around 18,000 COVID-19 patients in serious condition in Moscow's hospitals and new patients arrive every day. The lockdown in the epicenter of the pandemic continues. Moscow is still at serious risk, said its mayor. These freshly dug graves hint at the scale of the coronavirus outbreak in Yemen's largest southern city of Aden. Yemen's health ministry says the disease has killed 39 people here. The number of graves suggests that number is much higher. Yemen's health minister announced the first virus death on April the 29th. Two weeks later, that grew to 13. But charity Save the Children disputed the death toll. They recorded nearly 400 patients had died of coronavirus-like symptoms in just a week. Nobody knows the true numbers because Yemen is only testing 31 people per million. Good morning. On this, and you, uh, you may. nothing I love more than burning regulations. Um, does this mean Clark can now build a, a shed out the back? Uh, no. No, it does not, because he already has um, a shed. And the last thing we need is another shed for Clark. He has two. But it is. We're just it, having a bit of an earthquake here, Ryan. Quite a. Quite a decent shake here, All but right. um, if you see things moving behind me... Has it stopped, Prime Minister? The beehive moves a little more than most. <laughs> Has it stopped, Prime Minister, or is it still going? Uh, yep, no, it's, it's just stopped. Okay, and you're feeling safe and well to continue the interview? <laughs> no, we're fine, Ryan. All I'm right. not under any hanging lights. I look like I'm in a structurally sound, okay. uh, All right. sound place. As the investigation into the suspicious death of 12 people in police custody in Eastern Burkina Faso continues, President Rock Makrashenkabori has reacted. The Burkina Bay president on Saturday deemed the suspicious death of the detainees in a Tawabungo police station as unacceptable. 
He promised prompt decisions at the end of the investigations. According to relatives and NGOs, the 12 people who were detained on suspicion of terrorism were in fact civilians caught in a swoop and were summarily executed by firing. Activists have denounced the extrajudicial executions, noting that the 12 people were all ethnic Fulanis. After continued devastation from COVID-19 and Cyclone Amphan, now vicious swarms of desert locusts are sweeping over northwest India, eating up everything on the way. According to the latest, Rajasthan's capital city of Jaipur woke up to scenes of locusts swarming and descending down onto the have been badly impacted by these crop-munching desert locusts. The district administration of Agra in Uttar Pradesh has sounded a warning as well. The locust swarms are said to be almost three kilometers long, reminiscent of the biblical locust swarms that had struck Egypt. The lifting of restrictions brings the risk that the number of cases could climb. This weekend, crowds at a Toronto park sparked national concern that new freedoms could trigger a second wave, one that could be worse and put a huge burden on the healthcare system. And that concern can be seen in the latest number of cases. Ontario reported 460 new cases of COVID-19 today, the highest single day rise in more than two weeks. There are now more than 25,000 cases in that province. Vieni Ale. Vai, vai. Sì, la sto facendo, vieni. Non dargli la schiena. Non dargli la schiena, lui fa i cavoli suoi. Vieni Ale, vieni, vieni. Mamma! Guarda che il ven, eh, stai calmo. Cosa io a, a tre metri l'Alessandro? Fermi! Fermi! Eh, se ne hanno tanti, non pensi che venga a casa. 